Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. I'm gonna go look at some tropical fruit, some Garcinias, some Garcinia gardnerianas, Garcinia humulus, Garcinia intermedia, Garcinia brasiliensis, Garcinia humbromiana, and go look at the zebu cows for a moment. Uh, uh, one of the babies is four months old, and it's usually when you wean them, so he's doing really good. So I'm happy to have them. They make me happy, and um, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna go do a video. Enjoy. It's looking good around here. Um, other than the video, there you go. <laughs> I don't edit it and I just like <clears throat> do a video. Look at these mangoes. This is a peach cobbler mango and it's a, just a three-year-old tree and it's covered in fruit. Um, everything looks pretty healthy. We've kind of been having a drought. It hasn't rained in a while. Again, this is a buttercream that doesn't have a lot of fruit on it, but it's, we kept getting knocked by the wheelbarrow with hay, so I don't do that anymore. Um, this is a coconut cream. We got a lot of mangoes. Um, they're getting big. <clears throat> All different kinds, mostly top tier mangoes. Lots of uh, sweet tarts and I think some orange sherbet. That's it of our lychees that made it. Uh, they want to be watered until they get bigger. So I've been giving them big inputs. This this high grass, low zebu manure with urine, processed hay. Um, breaks down really quick and it seems to work. So here's Carnation. She does not have a baby and I put a collar on her because I'm having a vet come out. So she wants some of these weeds so I picked her some of these things. She's just too skinny um, and she fights with my little cow Pepsi and Pepsi hates her and Pepsi is my favorite so there you have it. Um, Wally's in here because there's a bunch of cows next door, big cows. They uh, are doing rotational grazing, which is cool. Um, beef cattle, it's 15 acres. A doctor, I believe, from Winter Haven bought it. There's no house on it yet, but he's been putting fences up, bob wire. I don't want to do bob wire. I'm going to do hot wire, I decided. I'm going to do rotational grazing because my there's Pepsi. Look at her gorgeous copper color. And then she has a black mask. She's just stunning. She's my little girl. Huh. Oh. They're the same height, exactly. 32 and a half inches. They're identical. They're like identical twins, size-wise. <clears throat> There's the babies talking to the donkeys. So I'm going to mow areas so I can put the hot wire up, get them used to it. And um, there's a little sketch. Hi, sketch. There's Romeo, there's Pepsi, there's Luna. So as soon as I separated that gray cow out that didn't like Pepsi, everyone got along. There's the big cows next door. They got babies too. No bulls, but they're big, nice cows. It's turned into cow town here. I love it. <laughs> right in the heart of Vero Beach. Uh, here's a little Romeo, here's fish. Hi, Romy, you little cutie. Oh, he's so sweet. He's just a little darling bull. Yes, he is. He's gonna have horns. He's little. He's four months old. I, I would say he's about ah. 60 pounds, maybe. Maybe. Um, he's little. He comes up to my knee. Um, he's cute. He's very sweet. He's very wrinkly. See his face? Ah. 
looks just like the Panganera cows in India. I love that. <coughs> Little sweet angel. Your mother is right there. A gorgeous Pepsi. Bogle Farms Uma is that who that's who that is. Bogle, B O G L E. If you go to the International Miniature Zebu Association herd book, you could look her up. So, so they're registered. He had actually jumped and got bob wire, so he got a cut here. And he doesn't know what I'm doing talking, talking on the videos, but he's the one that got used to it the most. Oh, he's just a little angel cow. Bull steer soon. It's gonna be a little pet steer. There's Pepsi. Hi, darling. That's his mother. Look how beautiful she is. She's my girl. She's so sweet. Just the sweetest, nicest cow anybody could want. And does whatever I want. And I got her. She was seven months old and raised by her mother. And I don't know, we just became friends really quick. I love her to death. She's my little angel, love her. Um, she's gorgeous. And her son. So I'm just gonna leave the babies on. She's probably pregnant again. She's very healthy. Um, doesn't seem to have any issues. Fish doesn't seem to have any issues. This is a, I think Bogle Farms Luna. But I'm not sure. I think so, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is Bogle Farms Midnight. He's our little bull. He's only three years old, and look at his hump. That's nice. He's a nice looking bull. He gets red all around his middle. He really doesn't have his summer colors yet. This part turns all red, and around his eyes get red. He's stun a stunner. <laughs> He's a stunner, anyway. He's getting the stripe right now. Um, goes all down his back. His whole middle turns that color. He's just, I don't know, really pretty. They're really pretty nice cows. Those things want to come over here. Look at them. It's a cow video. All right. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna, I like breeding, the, I like the calves. I, I mean, how could I not? But she's been a problem. She's skinny, skinny, and she likes to fight, so. She has to be, we have to check her out. She even is getting tiger stripes on her orange. <laughs> she should be all white by now, but, because it's still been cool at night, um, she doesn't have, she doesn't, she hasn't lost all her, her gray. I know, Snars, you want more weeds. I have to make this video. But if I don't do it, she will knock her water over. So I have to give her, wait, this is sweet tart mango. So all these mangoes are just for me to eat because, or I could sell the seeds for $5 each, I guess is what I'm gonna do. Um, uh, and uh, eat them. I'm gonna eat them. These are Venus mangoes. I imagine other people could eat them, but I can't really sell them as for fruit food um, because of the rules against um, manure and selling food to the public. So that's okay. I have all the mangoes in the back that are haven't had any manure brought to them in over a year, so they're fine. I'll sell those as food mangoes, and I'll sell these as eaten mangoes um, for myself. These are the coconut cream. <clears throat> this is a honey kiss mango. Look at this thing. I mean, I should get these things out of here so I could see it better, um, but... Um, it's like anything to hide the fruit from the the birds and the creatures, the possums and the, this is that peach cobbler mango that I showed you. 
I've been showing you. Look at all the fruit on this thing. I, it's like way above my head. I'm like below, standing below it right now. So it's a big, it's getting to be a big tree. And that's only uh, three and a half years from a, a small three gallon. So this is the, uh, the grafted fruiting koi muck tree that's fruited two years, the past two years. And uh, sure, it's gonna fruit this year. First two years, three, first time was three fruit. Last year was a little more. This fruit does not ship. Um, so I'm not gonna bother. Uh, I think I promised people that I would ship, but I don't contact people when I have seeds or fruit or stuff like that. They have to contact me um, if they see something they like. And, uh, but look at all that fruit on there. I mean, that says it all. Uh, I decided to do like I did with the mangoes back there. And look at all that fruit. I mean, it's just, and all the branches are like that. It's like that uh, in bee tree. And, and put big manure around it, pile. So this is today's. Um, this is a zebu, a zebu turd. Um, I'm not really afraid of this stuff. Uh, but that's why all this stuff has to be sold as seed can't be. I have to eat it all. I'm so glad. <laughs> I found that applying the big uh, input of uh, the grass with the, uh, the processed grass, you know, it's soiled grass from the cows, from the zebu. Um, this is a pineapple pleasure. I'm not going to touch any mangoes after I touch that um, manure. So... I'm going to try to wash my hands in a second here. So this is a um, sapodilla that hadn't been setting fruit since the freeze. And now I put some manure next to it and it looks good. But I, you know, I, I've been thinking about this, this grass and the manure as the sole input. Uh, and I, and all the moisture that's in the air at night here. And we don't water anything. It's all, everything is just all natural, dry farmed. So, um, but the, uh, the, the, this is a sweet tart again. Um, uh, this is kind of looking pretty finally. Um, the sweet tart, or not the sweet tart, the, um, the hay and the grass, the hay and the manure. Um, with the pea in it, I guess, because it has pea in it, because it's on the ground. I use it for bedding, and they eat it. So that's what it is. So then I scoop it up every day, and then I put it down throughout the farm. But all carbon contains eight times its weight in water. So the amount of its weight is all water when you're putting it down. And then, obviously, it... Um, once it attaches to the ground and it has the fungi in it, and then it gets moisture from the air, it could process all the water into the system during times of drought. I know that sounds kind of strange, but that's just what I noticed with goes on with the bananas that I put this next to. That's where I noticed that the bananas look like they've been watered after I put it there. And it's not a... It's not a fertilizing thing. It's a water thing, definitely. It looks like they've been watered. Because it's mostly, I mean, it's mostly grass. That's mostly what it is. It's like a bale of grass. Hay a day, probably, I use. It's been pissed on. I'm working my way over to the cashew. <clears throat> So lychees, all these lychees over here, they uh, they didn't like the drought. Oh, the pond. Speaking of the drought, so this was a pond, and now it's like all scary, really tall grass. And I know there's some water in there, um, and I, I know there's other things in there. I wouldn't uh, try to go down in there. That's for sure. <sighs> no. So this is the cashew. Um, and... They're looking good and there's a lot of fruit on it. Uh, oh, yes. 
indeed there is I see it it's everywhere and I like the other thing I put a lot of so now I can't sell this as fruit I can only sell it as seed but it normally because it hasn't rained in a while just wouldn't set all this fruit um, It's just that the the um, the manure is mostly wrapped up inside this hay. It's not like touching the ground, so it's not a fertil fertilization going on. It's a it's definitely a water thing and a fertilization at the same time. Once the fungi start um, coming out of the manure, which is pretty quick, these only produce fruit if they're getting water. So. Um, this thing's never been connected to water. Some of our grafted trees, actually a lot of our, all of our grafted trees, I think, except for one, or no, all of our store-bought trees, our early store-bought trees, nursery tr uh, meaning, uh, were connected to water. But anything that I grew from seed has never been connected to water, and, and this cashew has never been connected to water. <clears throat> and none of the mangoes were ever connected to water. But we did water for like a year, probably, a, yeah, probably a year. And, um, but it, we, it's been uh, now several years again since we haven't done any water. We didn't do the water right at the beginning. I love these Miko lemons, look at this. I was discouraged because it was a scant early crop during the drought, but then we got some rain and now it looks like they're covered in blooms. They're trying to get covered in blooms. Oh, it's just an amazing citrus, our citrus. This one has a little bit of bloom. I see a white bloom somewhere, but I was looking at this Valcare tree that has quite a bit of fruit on it. I'm going to go to the back and look at the... Um, I'll look at the mangoes later. There, there are like lots of them. These are some more of those lychee trees. So people ask if I do Centropic. Um, this is an oak tree. I let the nature put it there though, because we have so much biology here and so many trees that the trees come up where they should come up, I guess. This one's the same way. Now should I cut that? I don't know. I don't I don't I don't think so. Here's a different type of live oak. Or this is a true live oak growing here. It's a Miko lemon. There's a there's a lychee. There's a, a sugarloaf mango, it's looking good. Um, finally, it's an oak tree, uh, Miko lemon. Sweet tarts. We got lots of mangoes. Oh, this is a new path. This is my new path I put in. Um, there's a little rabbit. Got lots of rabbits. Rabbits are like, they will find your favorite tiny little uh, newly planted seedling tree and uh, and kill it but you can't get discouraged <laughs> you gotta plant on and don't look at the receipts until 10 years later <clears throat> and you won't be as discouraged probably you know, receipts for the plants. <laughs> Need to put some more manure next to the white sapote. I keep saying manure, but like I said, it's mostly, it's mostly grass, coastal hay.
I do love my, my paths through the wilderness with tropical fruit trees. Here's another white sapote. Um, there's lots of little oaks in here. So, and then palms. Is that Centropic? I don't know. I didn't install it. Let's, I didn't install it. Uh, that's the difference. So it's probably not Centropic. It's just natural. Um, look at this in B tree. I haven't put any manure near this, um, but I only sell in beet fruit. I've been uh, contemplating the, the in beet fruit. So I'm only selling the in beet fruit at seed value. Oh, is the right fruit on it? I see it could. <clears throat> yep. These are usually not very good, these first couple of tiny little fruits that ripen. I wouldn't sell anything like this. Like, look at the size difference. No, oh. not even ripe. That's weird. Um, okay. Hmm, they're good though. I can. Mm, hmm. There's something in them, but these things. They're just not gonna be good fruit. I don't know, because people want like two fruit when they're four, $4 each. But I mean, I should want to do that, right? But I hate uh, the whole store aspect of the farm. It's just not me, the nursery. That's why I don't sell plants. I sell seeds. Um, I plant my seeds usually right away so that I don't have a lot to sell or somebody wants my seeds, so. Um, but I don't know, I've been thinking about the MB, so it's just, it's just, I can't guarantee the fruit, so it's just seed value, but I can send fruit. Um, but, but if you want a mail, do you have to order at least, um, at least $20 worth? Gotta have a minimum, because it's just not worth it for me to, I mean, it's it's a lot. It's it's just too much work for for eight dollars. Um, <laughs> I'm too busy, unfortunately. That's that's mostly what it is because it's just me. Um, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's just that I'm so freaking busy. The cacao are looking good. I saw that the little tiny ones that I thought were dead are coming up from the bottom. I thought they died, so but they didn't. So I, I got uh, 33 little trees. So if I get like five of them grow out of that, I would be so happy. They were a mixed variety. I ordered a bunch of seeds from Montosa, but I still haven't gotten them. But maybe they're just waiting until there's all kinds of deer flies in here. Deer flies are the nastiest, most evil bugs you could possibly think of. And they go for the highest part of your body. And if you don't have any hair like me, then they bite you and they like leave these like pits because they're like, want you to bleed because that's what they eat, I guess. Ugh. That's why I'm wearing this thing in my head, because it's the only thing that that um, stopped them. And then I put um, heliconia leaves underneath it, and it feels real good. I learned that from a, a biodynamic person that came by here that moved from Laguna Beach to Venice Beach in Florida uh, on some acreage, and they came by here. and. They said in Costa Rica, a friend, I can't think of his name. He was a yoga instructor. Costa Rica at the resort, they use heliconia leaves. Um, they wrap people's body and put aloe on them and then wrap them in heliconia leaves, I guess. Uh, I think I need to try the aloe, I have some. 
working my way over to this uh, Garcinia trees. It would probably help my deer fly bites. Oh yeah, so this thing's been giving me lots of fruit. Uh, I usually don't like to show fruit unless I have it for sale, but look at all the flowers on that thing. Mmm, these are really good. I planted all the seeds. That's what I've been doing. I thought. Here's a garden ariana. Um, it's looking good. They're looking good, the fruit. And it's got lots of flower on it. Big flower. <clears throat> this is my female Garcinia humbrum. Niana, sea, sea, seashore mangosteen that I keep hoping has bloom on it. It's recovered from the 33 degree hour we got in January this year. I had never been affected by it. That's the remnant of it. The drought doesn't seem to bother it. I had given it some manure, so it does look better. Um, that's kind of what I've, the conclusion I've come to. It's the, the high quality, clean, small dose of manure with some processed hay, some trampled hay that's been pissed on, spit on probably. Let me go look at that. I don't see any uh, blooms on this. I have to go up to that Chachero. I got kind of sidetracked. There's so much to see. It's like, I thought this had lots of blooms on it, but I see remnants of blooms. Remnants, the red flowered but I don't see blooms on it. I know that other male tree has blooms, but why look at it? It wants some water. It wants it to rain again, most definitely. The cassava is all starting to look good, coming up. Here's a Chiang Mai 60 mulberry. Still getting mulberries off of it. So this is my um, Philodendron Gigantium blizzard. And it just got a little burnt to the green part during the acclimation to the outside, but this is its newest leaf and it looks pretty good finally. It's like sectoral um, blizzard, but it also has leaves. Oh yeah, this whole leaf was covered, was solid like that. So it wasn't a sectoral leaf, but it looks okay. Seems like it's gonna, be just fine. I got to go look at the Chichijiro. I counted them and we got like, um, it's a key lime. It looks good. It's all seed grown. All the citrus here is seed grown organic from organic fruit. Okay, this is a, there you go. These are good. There's a lot on here, I see. Mm -hmm. I see a couple more. This thing's up to the top of my head finally, six feet. see a lot now. This has been happening quite a bit here. Um, oh yeah, baby. That's a big bird. Huh? This is a 
big part too. No water. It's amazing. These things are just truly amazing. So these are like uh, the Garcinia gardneriana. This is the one that I thought was a achachiro because it has, I mean, look at the leaves. It had all leaves that look like achachiro leaves, like this. And um, I hadn't had a fruiting achachiro yet, so sorry, I'm like not focusing on the, focus on the fruit, Eric. So I didn't want to knock the green fruit off. It's nice that there's not a lot of black marks on these things, you know, like bites, holes, bites in them, like a lot of the Garcinia gets. Um, I haven't seen it. Knock on wood. Hello. I have too much fruit in my hand. That was a knock, I guess. Hello, a cha cha tree, a cha chiro. So there's other things in here. There's Cherry of the Rio Grands, lots of different types, and I see them, uh, but I'm not gonna point them out because they're tiny. Uh, here's a Santal tree. Here's a world's best mulberry. I like this mulberry a lot. It just keeps on giving and giving and giving. Every day I get fruit for days and days and days. A little tiny tree. No water, that's from a cutting. This is a cherry of the Rio Grande. So I saw the black bumblebees uh, pollinating this, uh, which is kind of cool. And it didn't do a whole bloom, but I'm sure it's gonna finish up next time it gets rain. Seems like it. Um, there's quite a bit of fruit on there. So I'm happy with that, but it, I'm sure it will give more because it usually does. Just checking to see if there's any more fruit on here because there is. Of course, these are a little tiny ones, but they're even good. So good. Oh. Go up to the Chachiro. Not gonna have as much luck with that. So people want my address, which is easy to find, um, but you have to like uh, uh, email me, which you can find in the about section, um, or text me, it was easier. Text, my email works. And um, tell me what you want and um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, so a Chichiro tree. I tend to only like to give farm tours to people that are into growing, and but some people want to come by here for real estate purposes, but this place is, you know, it would cost somebody at least $10 million for me to even think about moving, so um, it's not for sale. It's just not for sale. <clears throat> I couldn't replace it. I don't think anybody could, so... Um, this is a Nuclea latifolia. Look at the leaves on that. Looking good. That shade grown one looks good. I love this area here. This little um, uh, shady area that I have Monstera deliciosa cuttings and different aeroid cuttings growing in and aeroids in pots and my little cacao tree here and then I have little seedlings and then there's a, a big, um, I should look at this, Big Garcinia intermediate tree. Um, she's loaded uh, with fruit, or flowers that are fruit. And the other one is not quite as good, but look at these. I mean, look at how stunning this is. The aeroids belong here. I'm putting in the aeroids on some of the oak trees. Oh, and I forgot there was one over here and I never watered it. And I can't believe that. I need to water that. I forgot. So it's been here for a long time. I haven't watered it. These others, I've been watering. I just want them to make it. And then once they're like, <clears throat> I'm not worried about it. And uh, though my aeroids that were in the drought have come back, so 
I think I'm over, over, I'm watering with rainwater. Oh, look at her. That's Philodendron speciosa, unknown, aquagenera, gorgeous. dropped all these things here. See, I get uh, mesmerized by the uh, aeroids and uh, luxuriants. Uh, they're real easy in compost. Thankfully, we don't have any of those weird lizards that other people have yet. Hopefully we won't, but uh, mostly just the green ones and those, those lizards. So I moved the Waraquianum out here. She looks stunning. This is Esmeralda. Esmeralda. This is my um, Philodendron Spiritus Sancti that didn't really like the more sunny location, but it was turning bright red, which I liked. Um, but I moved it over here in the shade. And this is the seed grown from um, I mean, look how healthy that is. Seed grown from Red Leaf Exotic. I bought it when it was $900. As soon as the first time it went on sale, so I got one of the earlier ones. Um, and I no regrets. I did sell an expensive wood bowl I had to get it, but I bought it. I got it. <laughs> That's all that counts, and it's alive, thank God. Uh, grown in our compost. Everything we, we, we grow is in pots, is in compost. Uh, it's basically uh, pine shavings and, and, and that, that hay that you saw. Um, aged with some bokashi uh, uh, compost, some composted bokashi, uh, aged bokashi uh, compost in an uh, area I've been making compost for almost 10 years. So it's a nice spot, makes good compost, but I make low piles, like they're like a foot, two feet tall, and then they shrink down to like eight inches. It takes about a year, I don't touch them and then I scrape it up. And that's what this stuff grows in. This is a, you know, Milano Chrysum, I think, is. This one for sure is. Uh, is it Gigi, or Gigas? Um, let me check. <sighs> Know, right? Oh, it's Gigas. Yeah, I thought it looked. Um, so I'm able to start um, <sighs> this is uh, Philodendron Maximum and it's growing uh, in the soil without uh, being watered or anything. This is a uh, Monstera Obliqua Peru right here. That's a new new uh, branch coming out from it rooted in this spot here. This is the uh, Philodendron uh, Chironia Mascara. This is that uh, Obliqua Peru growing up here. This gigantic, huge um, let me look at how big it is. Guanacast tree. Nitrogen fixer. Somebody knocked this one over, I see. This is a philodendron heterocraspidon. <laughs> this is a philodendron esmeraldense. Yeah. Narrow. Whereas this is narrow. One of them is. This is narrow, I think. This is a Philodendron gloriosum. Big difference between gloriosum and luxuriance. Big difference. Anthurium regali. Esmer Esmeralda. 
um, Anthurium regali. That was a lot bigger and I, uh, I dried it out. I thought it needed less water when it was cold, but it didn't need a change. I know that. Anyway, I'm going to go up to the Achachero. I don't get sidetracked. So I have my, uh, uh, uh philodendron domestica. It was turning all white, so I chopped it back. Look at how nice that is. Domesticum. Um, and I thought it sent out an all white thing, but no, it sent out this one, which is perfect. So I was very happy with that. Um, very happy. And I put it in the sun here. And this is a, a little tree of that big tree. Um, yeah. Uh, is, this centro is that centropic? Um, uh, here's a, a here's a uh, sweet orange, seed grown, organic, of course. She's looking good, uh, splendid, philodendron. Is that or glorious? That's glorious. This is splendid. This is Philodendron speriorum. Start to attach to the wood. They're coming along. Is that cha cha trees? There's a little oak tree. You see it right there? Uh, another one of those nitrogen fixing trees, guanacaste trees. Then I have Heliconia and Stramonts and <coughs> Calatheas. And those other things that you don't pronounce the the A. You, I can't think. Look at this. Oh, look at this. I have to show you. I passed by Philid or Monstera Flame and a bunch of other stuff, of course. But look at this Philodendron Jose Buena. She likes full sun. She's looking good. I got it on this tree that the top snapped off. So uh, there's a, a Monstera Thai constellation down there. See it? It's got good variegation. It just needed to be in the sun more. So I'm going to move that to its own tree. I haven't figured out which one, but it's going to be one of them. One of these. I'm not going to do all the palm trees, but I'm going to do a few. <clears throat> And then I have my Equigenera Monstera Deliciosa, but I, uh, it, it, it doesn't the Deliciosa grow on the ground? This seems like a climber um, from Equigenera. Uh, so, um, Albo. Uh, so I'm not really sure what that is. That's gotta be a Barsigiana, right? I'm not an expert on those, but that's what I think. This is the other Aquimuk tree. Um, this tree produced one fruit two, two years ago. That uh, so was good, but it was different than our other tree fruit. And it's in an unfortunate location. I thought I was doing the right thing, putting it right in front of the house, but unfortunately this is the most compacted spot. And then it's still got a trail on two sides of it. So like a foot from its foot from its trunk, which isn't very good for it. So um, not for like, for it's being able to move nutrients efficiently. Um, that's a, a tree aloe. It's a nice one. These little beds are nice. These little bloom flowers look like those pelican flowers, but they aren't when they open. Here's one open. Yeah. Tree aloe. These things look good. <sighs> those things where you didn't pronounce the the A pronounce it E or use it Let's do it like a I can't think of it. They're the same thing as these these things. Just 
not very happy with no water, but um, it's more than the others because it's near that Licula palm. So here's my uh, here's my chachero that has fruit on it, and it's right next to a, a really delicious Kenistel tree that produces delicious fruit called Delightful, a grafted tree. And there's, I counted 30 fruit, fruit just looking in here, which they're hard to see, but there's a lot of them, and I'm gonna be eating them. A cheer on. I didn't even see these right in front of me when I looked in here before, but there were like tons of them. So, um, yeah, that's it. And let's see how big around it is. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I would say it's about eight inches around completely at the bottom. And then they have them off these secondary branches. Off the main branches is this branch. And then off those branches are littler branches that have the fruit on them. So they have to be like, have lots of little layers to them before they will set fruit. Um, it seems. This tree was topped twice in a hurricane and it was kept in a, uh, root pruning pot when I got it. And I didn't plant this at my other place. I almost did, but we just decided we wanted to get another place and do this farm. And that's I brought it over here and planted it in the ground. I don't know why I didn't plant it, but I'm glad I took it with me and it's doing well. So there's some peanut butter fruit in there and there's some, these passion fruits that grow well on these heliconias. Um, when the heliconias get more rain, they like, seem to do a lot better. Like everything else, but supposedly we're going into a rainy phase right now. So there's a, I'll go across here and look at this thing. I've been feeding these to my cow cause she loves them. So I hate them. Some sort of aeroid vine of some sort. Probably native. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not an expert. There's the Achachiro, in there. Uh, yeah, there's, I didn't even see these. I mean, look at, look at that. Yeah. I guess they get a whole bunch on the, on one little twig. Um, It hasn't done this before. So here's the uh, Bunchosia. I'm not sure which one it is. Probably the most common one. Um, I know there's two types. Uh, you know, the peanut butter fruit. Some people like it, some people hate it. I'm willing to have anything that grows and fruits on its own that some people will like it and some people will hate it. So I'm okay with that. The creatures usually don't bitch about it. <clears throat> So I talked about the uh, the rabbit getting your favorite tree, and that was the case with me. And I'm trying to look for it now. I don't like to do this, look for little trees, because what what if it's not here? But it'll be here. Um, my um, yeah, there it is. All right? No. There it is. Somebody stepped on it. Probably me. It's right here. Um, doesn't look very good. Why is that? This is a Anona Selzmanii that the rabbits bit the top of it off and it came back, but it looks like it's um, like somebody attacking it again almost or something somebody stepped on it or something I, don't know. 
I tried to put stuff around it and usually when you do stuff like that it's it's uh, when I have done stuff like that it there it is it looks happier looks better yeah so i ended up killing it but it came back so it's not always a total loss uh i think that's my like second or third attempt on the anana sells money i just <clears throat> i don't coddle stuff along and if you don't coddle stuff along sometimes it just can't can't make it usually because of the soil but if you mix zebu manure into the soil, I found that <clears throat> things tend to survive, but I didn't know that when I planted that. So um, yeah, fresh zebu manure mixed into the hole and then plant. I don't water, That's I don't water anything. Anyway, this is, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And this is Florida Natural Farming. I hope you have a beautiful day.